This is the Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. I also did a drop test on this S25 Ultra, so if you want to see that, I'll place a link in the iCard on the top right of this video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. We'll start off by removing the SIM tray and the S Pen. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a gray rubber gasket around the opening. And here's the S Pen itself. Now, heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a better look at the glass backplate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. So you don't have to take apart the phone to replace those. The camera rings can also be pried off and replaced, since those are also glued down in place. Some people think they're easily removable, however you'll need to apply a lot of force to pry them off. So if you're planning on replacing those, Applying heat will make it easier. I personally think it's a good thing that these are replaceable, since if you ever happen to drop the phone and chip these or damage the rings, you'll have the option of replacing each individual ring, and you won't have to replace the entire back plate. All you'll need is a replacement ring and some B7000 adhesive glue. There are now 18 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Taking a look at the top motherboard cover, we see the ultra wide band and NFC antenna located here, as well as the wireless charging coil. Looking at the other side, we see graphite film top transfer heat, as well as this portion over here which detects the S Pen. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. Here's a look at the top earpiece speaker assembly. This is the speaker itself, and there's an antenna board on the corner. And this is the bottom speaker assembly. There's a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the speaker opening. As for the linear haptic feedback or vibrator motor, it's located behind the speaker in the enclosure. These flex cables connect the main board to the subboard, and this one connects the screen to the main board. So when it comes to replacing the screen, you don't necessarily have to take the back apart, even though doing it this way will make it easier for you to disconnect the cable from behind the screen and reconnect it to the replacement screen. If you wanted to, you can just heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off and carefully disconnect the flex cable from the behind the screen, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen, making sure you align the screen properly with the frame 
so when you're pressing it down, it reconnects with the flex cable behind the screen. However, this method might be a little bit more difficult, since if you don't manage to get the flex cable to connect behind the screen, you're going to have to pry that screen off again, which will pose a high chance of damaging a working screen by prying it off. So I prefer to remove the back plate, the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and the speaker assembly itself, at which point the flex cable for the screen can be disconnected from the back, and then I'll pry the screen off. So to remove the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. This year, Samsung has replaced the pull pouch with a better design, so you can easily just peel off the tabs and lift up and remove the battery. However, I want to remove the pull pouch with the battery, since I want to show off the vapor chamber underneath the battery, so I'm just going to peel off one of the tabs on the side and pry it off with the battery. Here's a look at the 5000 mAh battery. And this is the 5G mm wave antenna. Taking a look at the main board, we see the 50 megapixel ultra wide lens, the 200 megapixel primary camera, the 50 megapixel periscope telephoto lens, and the 10 megapixel telephoto lens. All cameras except the ultra wide lens have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner, the ambient light sensor and laser autofocus, and the LED flash. The camera cables are located on the other side, which can be disconnected by just popping them off. This is the front proximity and ambient light sensor, and there's a thermal pad on the back shield to help transfer heat. Once the graphite pad has been peeled back, we see a thermal pad which is seated over the RAM that's seated over the processor. The thermal pad also covers the ROM or onboard storage. There is also another microphone on this side located here. There are three Phillips screws on the subboard which need to be removed. Looking at the subboard, we see the primary microphone located here and the charger port located next to that with a red rubber gasket around it. The sim reader is located on the other side. Looking at the copper vapor chamber, the overall size has definitely increased from the S24 Ultra. So the copper vapor chamber runs underneath the battery, as well as the motherboard top transfer heat. The cover for the S Pen enclosure is held down with some adhesive, and that can be removed by applying heat and gently peeling it off. This is the flex cable for the volume keys and power button. To replace that, just gently peel it off from the frame and lift up and remove the metal bracket from inside of the frame. As for the buttons, those can be pulled out of the frame. The 12 megapixel front facing camera is glued in place with a cure in place gasket, so if you need to replace that, you'll need to use an X-Acto knife or a razor blade to carefully cut the glue around the sides and then pull out the camera. For anyone worried about accidentally inserting the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, on this phone you don't need to worry since both the microphone and the filters are seated above the holes, so they wouldn't get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 9 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together.
Once everything's back in place, apply a new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the foam, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.